Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel GSA PUC Mysore. This is the fourth session of our third chapter of electronic second PUC syllabus that is transistor amplifier. In the last two sessions, we discussed about the common base amplifier circuit and the common collector amplifier circuit. In this session, we will be dealing with the other type of amplifier that is the common emitter amplifier. This common emitter amplifier is the most widely used amplifier in all of the circuits. Out of these three amplifier circuits that is the common base, common collector and the common emitter configuration of the amplifiers. This common emitter amplifier is most widely used because the voltage gain, the current gain and the power gain all of these three are very high in this common emitter amplifier compared to the other two types of amplifier circuits. So let us try to understand this with the help of a circuit. Here the common emitter name comes from the fact that this emitter terminal is common for both input side as well as the output side of the amplifier circuit hence the common emitter amplifier circuit. Now let us try to draw a circuit using a NPN transistor this is the emitter base and this is the collector terminal as usual the emitter to base junction will be forward biased and the collector to base junction will be reverse biased. Let us call this resistors as RB and RC. This as VBB and VCC. Here we are going to use a coupling capacitors C2 and here C1. Here the input signal which is to be amplified will be applied here. Let us call that as Vs. And the voltage which is measured between these two terminals will be named as Vce. And the voltage which is measured between these two terminals will be named as VBE. This is VBB. As usual, the emitter base junction will be forward biased and the collector base junction will be reverse biased. But here, the collector to base junction, the biasing Hege then that will be reverse biased with the help of this VCC indirectly. And this VBB and VCC along with the resistor RB and RC will be used to maintain the Q point at the center of the active region. Here we are going to measure the output voltage which will be named as V out. Now let us try to apply the KVL for the output loop. So applying KVL for this particular loop, VCC is nothing but the voltage source. VCE is nothing but the voltage drop across the collector and the emitter junction and RC is nothing but the resistor that is the collector resistor. Here IC is the collector current, IB is the base current. Now let us try to apply the KVL applying KVL. We are going to get it as VCC equals the voltage drop across this junction which is named as VCE and the voltage drop across this resistor which is nothing but the product of the current which is flowing through this resistor and the resistance value that is IC into RC. So VCE that is we can alter this expression as VCE equals VCC minus IC into RC. With the help of this expression, let us try to understand what happens when a positive half cycle is applied uh, for the emitter base junction. This is the positive half cycle. Here, 
the base terminal of the transistor is at positive potential. So, as soon as the positive half cycle is appearing across this junction, the forward bias of this junction increases, which in turn increases the base current. If base current increase, I thought, in the previous session itself, I told you, if the base current increases, the collector current will also increase. If the collector current increases, the voltage drop across this resistor will also increase. If the voltage drop across this resistor increases, then the voltage that is VCE, which is nothing but the output voltage in Agate, decrease. Let us try to understand this with an example. Suppose VCC can be considered as 12 volts, that is constant, that value will not be changing. VCC is constant. Uh, IC into RC initially it was equal to 3 volts, sorry, 3 volts. VCE now will be equal to 12 minus 3 which is equal to 9. Second example, IC into RC product na, let us consider it has increased to 6. Now VCE value has reduced to 6. Third example, VCE uh, value has reduced to 3 when IC into RC value is equal to 9. And IC RC value increase at the VCE value in agate decrease at the I mean to say that for the positive half cycle, the output voltage will decrease. Decrease on the hand daga, zero axis line in the mail gade nange hoga kagala. I have to draw the line which comes below the zero axis line. Now let us try to understand what happens when a negative half cycle is appearing across the junction. Since the base terminal is connected to the positive potential of the battery, as soon as the negative half cycle is appearing across the junction, the forward biasing condition decreases. Forward biasing condition decrease, the input current IB decreases. IB decrease, which in turn decreases the IC value. IC value decrease, the voltage drop across this resistor also decreases, which in turn increases this VCE. Again, let us try to understand this with an example. Let VCC value is equal to 12 itself. Initially, this product IC into RC value is equal to 9. So, 12 minus 9 which is equal to 3. Now, IC into RC value has decreased to 6. Now, 12 minus 6 VCE value is increased to 6. Similarly, IC into RC is reduced to 3. So, 12 minus 3 whose value will be equal to 9. I mean to say that if the voltage drop across this RE resistor is decreasing, then the voltage across the collector to emitter terminal will increase. So, increase for the negative half cycle, the voltage drop across the collector to emitter terminal increases, that is VCE, which in turn can be called as V out. Increase I have to draw the line which lies above the zero axis line. So, for the positive half cycle appearing at the input side, I am going to get the amplified version of the negative cycle. But for the negative half cycle, we are going to get the inverse that is the positive amplified version at the output side. Here the output and the input are 180 degree out of phase that is the output is at 180 degree phase shift of the input cycle. There is a phase shift between the input and the output cycle. How we are going to get the output as the amplified version of the input signal and thendaga? Since this is a common emitter configuration, we are having that current amplification factor equal to IC plus IB. But the base current value will be very very small. IC can be written as beta times of IB. This base current will be multiplied with the current amplification factor beta whose value is very very large. So, hagagi current gain kuda nan gain agarate high irate in this common collector amplifier amplifier circuits. Voltage hege high agarate RC value uh, sorry RB value will be low 
and RC value will be high. That is output resistance value will be high and the input resistance value will be low. So, E value jasti radrinda. Even though IC value is small at uh, moderate value idhe and third runo koda, when that gets multiplied with the higher value, the voltage across this uh, resistor will also vary. Even that gets increased. So, the voltage gain of this uh, common emitter amplifier is very, very large. And the Coming to the characteristics, the current gain is large, the voltage gain is high, the power gain is high, low input resistance, moderate high output resistance and there is a 180 degree phase shift between the input and the output signal. In applications and the bandhaga, then ge AF signals, ge RF signals, ge amplifier circuits beke beko. AF amplifiers, RF amplifiers, AF and thedre audio frequency amplifiers, RF amplifiers, radio frequency amplifiers. So, this common emitter amplifier circuits is most widely used as an amplifier in the RF circuits as well as the AF circuits. So, this is all about the common emitter configuration. Out of these three amplifiers, that is the common base amplifier, common collector amplifier and the common emitter amplifier, this common emitter amplifier is most widely used because the gain of all the three parameters, that is the voltage, current and the power is very, very high compared to other two types of uh, amplifier circuits. But the only difference between all these uh, three is here in the common emitter amplifier circuit, there is a phase shift between the input and the output signals. Clear? Now it's time to have a look on part 2 of the session. Welcome back to part 2 of the session. In this part, we are going to discuss about the different types of transducers. So let us consider a temperature transducer which is called as a thermocouple. A thermocouple is an electrical device consisting of two dissimilar electrical conductors forming an electrical junction. A thermocouple produces a temperature dependent voltage as a result of the thermoelectric effect and this voltage can be interpreted to measure the temperature. What is this thermoelectric effect? It is a direct conversion of temperature differences to electric voltage and vice versa via a thermocouple. So, this is a thermocouple which contains two dissimilar electric conductors forming an electrical junction. So, what is the difference between RTD and thermocouple? RTD is nothing but the resistance temperature detector. So, both are the temperature detectors itself but most RTDs are limited to maximum temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit whereas certain thermocouples can be used to measure 2700 degree Fahrenheit. RTDs are superior to thermocouple because their readings are more accurate. With this let me conclude the part 2 of the session. Thank you. So, in this session we so, how the common emitter configuration can be used as an amplifier. In the next session, I will be coming with a new topic. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.